mean, that's a compliment that, that we paid the state of Texas for forever. Yeah. Texas just has a lot of talent. Texas, Texas players go all the time. That was a big dig on like that's the that's the uh, the the Monday morning quarterback dig on Mac Brown is that did you see all those all, all American all conference dudes that show up at every other's university that came from Texas? Why why haven't they been playing quarterback so wherever? Well, I mean that was the thing about, in Austin. No, and you're right because like to your point, like with Mac Brown, it was like evaluation is the thing. We're gonna get who we want. Did I pick the right guy? Did I offer Robert Griffin III at defensive back or quarterback? Did I offer Johnny Manziel? At defensive back or quarterback? Like, that was what was so infuriating about the Mac uh, Mac Jones, Mac Brown era. Was that we knew Texas was going to put together one of the best recruiting classes in the country. And they just, they kept messing around. Uh, Coach P says, do you think Rhett Lashley would get a look for the Texas job? I hope so. I hope so. Like, until Philip Montgomery decided to put together the most memorable Tulsa season in 10 years, I was looking at him going, anybody want to go get Rhett Lashley down there in Miami to go coach TU? And now Rhett Lashley out there with a, you know, with a one-loss Miami team that is begging and praying that Clemson catches an L so they can slide into the ACC championship game. But Lashley grew up under Gus Malzahn. Like, I even think he played quarterback for him at, at Springdale. And he runs the same offense. If anything, he might run it better, Right. And what he did at SMU, putting them on the right course, a course they haven't been on for 30 years, going to Miami, getting De'Eric King, getting Miami back to being something like good, you know, a year after Manny Diaz was, we all going, is he going to get fired? Because he got beat in the sweat, or not in the sweatpants bowl, in, in the bar bowl, in the bar bowl, in the bowl named after a bar, walk-ons independence bowl by a team from Ruston, Louisiana. I mean, Rhett Lashley has saved lives. Quite, lo- quite honestly, Rhett Lashley has saved lives. But would he be a good head coach at Texas? I think so. I think he can recruit, too. I think he can develop quarterbacks. I think it's a good look. What do you think, Ron? I think that it's going to be an uphill. I truly can't see an avenue where Texas gets to be great again un- until the other, com- uh, the other teams in the conference truly have some sort of unfortunate downfall. Like, I, unless uh, Oklahoma hits the skids, uh, Iowa State no longer decides that they want to play good football. I, I don't... I can't think of a coach that I could that I could imagine going to Texas besides the ones that are already amazingly good right now. Like, if Nick Saban decided to change the locks and go to Texas, yeah, Texas will probably be okay. If uh, Dabo decides to leave Clemson, go to Texas. Yeah, Texas would probably be pretty good. I I think like I I think that Rhett Lashley going to Texas, like I, I like the style of football that he puts on, on the field. I think that he's really creative and I, I like the I like his background. But there's nothing there's nothing that like it's not Rhett Lashley, it's Texas. I don't see how anybody can go there and, and succeed. No, I I one hundred percent get that. And that's something that they're gonna have to deal with and answer for. It probably means they're gonna pay through the nose for whomever they go get because like Sneaky, sneaky to me, sneaky to me, right? Sneaky to me. Give Joe Moorhead another chance. I mean, he he was doing great things at Penn State, didn't go so well at Mississippi State. Now he's offense coordinator at Oregon. Might be a dude that you want to take a swing at. I know that everybody has Graham Harrell at the top of their list because that's that's where I go immediately. Go get the favorite son of Ennis, Texas, right? Go get the coach uh, that was quarterback for his dad. Do that put Texas Tech on the map for real, you know? <clears throat> Harold a Crabtree to beat Texas? Yeah. Like, that's the dude that I would go get if I'm going to go do this. And I would say, here's your six-year contract, paying whatever it is it takes to get him away from USC, and we swear for a Lord, we will leave you alone, and we will stay out of your way. So now I want to get to the headline topic, the thing that I put first among the semicolons of things. Number one, Alabama might ruin LSU. Now, there are uh there are a number of, of ways to go at this, Ron. But like the way I like going at this is the stuff that ain't happening on the football field. Cause that's way more fun. That's way more fun. So to start with, you had Ed Orgeron tell us around about September that he thought every last one of his kids 
had contracted the coronavirus at one point or another. Okay. And going back, we can go back before that. When his kids decided that they were going to take it upon themselves to march up to the president's office at the height of Black Lives Matter and tell them what's really good. Ed Orgeron didn't know that this was going on, which is clue one about what he doesn't know is going on at LSU. And then, you know, race is up there to try to do something. Okay. Then you get beat by Mississippi State, which we wrongfully believed meant that Mississippi State was good. No! Maybe, maybe not that they were, were good, but that they were going to be fun. And they, they have, that's the knife through my heart. That <laughs> Mississippi State has not been fun this year. Well, no, they've been fun the last two games. The last two games, they've been fun. They, it, dudes, that, dudes that no longer want to play football are gone. He started a new quarterback named Will Rogers, and that dude is getting buckets. Like, he's going to break a bunch of records and keep this up. Okay. But are they good? No. They're fun. They just lost the Egg Bowl, and they lost to Georgia. All right. But they got that LSU pelt. Mm -hmm. Can't take that away. No, you can't. You get to frame that. Right? Because, like, when we talked about, you know, the SEC West uh, division, like, as an all-timer back in, like, January, we were like, man, that Mississippi, like, they got LSU off the bat, man. That's going to be a problem. And then the more we look at it, we're going, wait a second. Is LSU going to be good? No, I don't think LSU going to be good. By the summer, I'm saying LSU is going to catch five losses. Do you know what gets to happen on Saturday, Ron? Uh, that we can rack up number four? Oh, that's five? Ooh. <laughs> and it's Alabama. Like, what I love most is that they... They had the game postponed, right, or canceled, depending on how things go. And then the SEC comes out right before the weekend and says, yeah, LSU, y'all going to have to get that Alabama smoke. <laughs> right as Alabama has distinguished itself as the best team in college football. Matter of fact, like, I was thinking about this. If we went back to, like, the Bowl Alliance portion of uh, college football era, like, when and did that, the UPI and the AP would have Alabama at number one. Right? Like, like that's, that's how it would go. And they beat the national champs. Now, you get Nick Saban back on the sideline who's got to be pissed that he missed the Iron Bowl. And you get a Mac Jones who's going, Kyle Trask, huh? Kyle Trask? Okay. And you get a Devontae Smith that's going, Kyle Pitts? Is that who y'all think? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And Pete Golden's defense has been lights out since the Ole Miss game. Right? All right, hold up. I'm going to try to chain a thought here because $10 Super Chat, Reggie says Texas is going to write a blank check to go out and get Hugh Freeze, Rhett Lashley, Brent Venables, Larry Fedora, Todd Monk, and Steve Sarkeesian, or do they dare bring back Mac Brown? They, nah, man. Like, Rhett Lashley's the only dude there they got a shot at. Nobody wants Larry Fedora. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian would be interesting, but I think Steve Sarkeesian is living his best life right now. Uh, it's your boy Chris Field says people are really calling the Vandy game she based palmed. What? Uh, if you're talking noise about about Sarah Fuller, you can take your five dollars back. It's fine. If you're not, reframe that. This is, this is a pro Sarah Fuller podcast until uh, until she milkshake ducks or something like that. No, I mean, I mean, like she's she's gonna stay on the team, and she got on a Zoom call and called out the culture, like. There was an ESPN staff writer, I believe, who got a Zoom call, you know, interview with her. And she said, yeah, I was like, y'all going to call each other out about this, this attitude y'all got on the sidelines? Because this is trash. Like, I won an SEC championship as a goalkeeper at Vanderbilt. And we were constantly in each other's ear because that's what you got to do to be accountable. And then she had coaches coming up to her saying, I've been waiting for somebody to say that for so long. And I'm like, oh, no, that's Derek Mason's. That's, that's what you were supposed to be doing, homie. And he wasn't. Anyway. So, like, on this Alabama kick, 